Welcome to the Crucial Classics Bring Your Own Copy series, where what we do is watch movies together. We are going to watch all of the biggest titles from that golden age of Hollywood. So join me as we will sync up, press play at the same time, and let's just enjoy the magic from this golden age of Hollywood. Hi, welcome back to Crucial Classics. If this is your first time here, welcome and take a look around at our channel. We have plenty of content for you to binge. If you love old movies, you've landed in the right spot because what we do here is watch them together from start to finish. I do the legwork of sourcing the film for us, so that is the advantage of joining in with these watch-alongs. We get to watch them from start to finish, and I share information about where I have found these titles, because if I can find them, then you can find them over on my Pinterest page. So for every movie that we watch at Makeup Board on my Pinterest page, I fill it with pictures just from the film, just like this wall of my living room decorated from top to bottom with my pictures because old movies are important to me for the past 32 years so each description of every video a link to Pinterest I make a board fill it with pictures just from that film within the board is where you can get information to be able to access the film and push play on it and be able to watch it from start to finish with me no gimmicks you can leave me out of where you're getting your copy of the film we're watching the crucial classics, just make sure your runtime matches mine. But again, the point and the mission is I'm not tempting and teasing you guys by, oh, I have this movie. You know, you have access to it too. Those are the only videos that I upload here on this YouTube channel. Um, so let's discuss bringing up baby. And ta da, I get to show you the footage of my huge poster. I would say, good gosh, I think I was 13. The Christmas that I got this poster from my parents and they let me know I told you guys now I'm gonna start to run my digital product picture photo packs that I offer for sale over at my Etsy shop so excited about those you guys can see I love classic film photography I've decorated my home with it when I was 13 my parents spoiled the F out of me and they let me know the changes that they went through to be able to get me that huge ass poster people of course I still have it to this day um, but that was the way it was back in the day. They had to go way, way, way to a different town. I don't know how they even found that this shop, a little brick and mortar shop existed. I wish that I could have ever gone back to that shop myself, but yeah, they tracked down a shop that had this poster in this side. Oh my gosh, you can see the photos that I love to just print and decorate a wall with, but that poster is like my prized possession. You guys have also seen, I have another one of Carrie from North by Northwest, but when you get into the full-size posters, people, that's a special, important thing. So there's that. That's just my connection to bringing up baby. I actually have that on my screen right now. I was looking up Katherine Hepburn's filmography, The Philadelphia Story. All right, because why I was looking up her filmography and why I see bringing up baby is we know the story, right? She's a bit overhyped. She has her autobiography available many a video here on YouTube, but she spoke it, she read it, and I've listened to that thing. And she had some success on Broadway and got to be kind of selected and moved out to Hollywood. So she kind of arrives in her little prissy. She was kind of prissy, uh, Catherine Hepburn. She was a bit much. I think like when she very first got to Hollywood, she was a bit much. She came all dressed up and everything and, you know, would insist upon wearing slacks a lot too, which was just not the thing. Let me turn off my heater. Um, in society for women at that time. And she kind of hits the ground running. She wins an Oscar pretty early on, right? Overhyping her. Because I'm actually looking through her filmography here on the I... What? I don't care what this thing is called. I can never... Their thing is IMDB, IDMB, IBM, whatever, you know? But she has some really bad movies, okay? Bill of Divorcement. That's probably widely available here on YouTube. I was going to say we because... Back in the day, when I just used to upload the movies on previous channels that I've had, um, Bill of Divorcement was one that I had uploaded. Uh, but from this movie, Bill of Divorcement, is from 1932, she gets to star with one of the Barrymores, John, the really handsome guy, right? He was her father. But that was kind of a big deal, like a big co-star to come stand next to in her very first film. And she kind of kept being able to get those type of co-stars and roles that hyped her up that I think didn't necessarily deliver, right? And then I thought she won an Oscar for Alice Adams, but I'm thinking... Maybe it's Morning Glory, but I'm seeing Morning Glory is from 1933, and it's just her third movie. That probably makes sense, because she got so overhyped, and then I think she's making a crap ton of money, too. That's the thing about Catherine Hepburn. You know, it's just some people 
well, you know, they tell you about like manifestation, right? And just how you have to have the right energy. It, it, there's some, you can pay attention to some more kind of spiritual people here on YouTube and they'll be kind of messing with your own mind about, you know, just what struggles you could be going through with life, <laughs> especially if it's anything to do with this. But then they're always just like, oh, you know, you got to manifest that. You got to have, you got to heal your relationship with that and shit. And it's like, you know, <laughs> for real sometimes. But she would be somebody that you could maybe think, figure that out, right? Like her vibration was right on the topic of money because from hitting Hollywood, she was commanding that check. And so I think like people were really kind of paying attention to how much money she was always making for these movies that were kind of womp womps. And so I, this is why I was looking up her filmography because she does Bringing Up Baby, Cary Grant, and Holiday, Cary Grant, both have a release year showing as 38 and then she gets that write-up of being box office poison, among others, but you know what the criteria was to be on that list? You're overhyped and you make too effing much money. And your movies don't necessarily bring in the money to my movie theater because I was, they said who wrote that list of box office poison was this dude somewhere in um, New York that was a movie theater owner, but I guess like he was respected or anybody gave a crap what his opinion was, right? So he circulated this list of the box office poison and she was notably on that and she dipped out of Hollywood for a while. She, I feel like a little bit about Katherine Hepburn, perhaps, in those years. I don't know that she much respected Hollywood. I feel like she kind of had a chip on her shoulder coming from play acting. And I think that she, I just, I gather that she maybe didn't much respect film. Just like the medium of film. So she kind of made her way through some things. Now, I'm sure she had a contractual obligation that probably didn't allow her a lot of picking and choosing of these performances that she had to do. But there were there were so many movies on that list that I didn't recognize the name of, and I'm sure, now I need to turn this back on. Sorry, I'm that person. I'm hot and I'm cold, I'm hot and I'm cold. Um, so it's interesting to me. She leaves, she goes back to her roots. She doesn't have a problem with that, right? And she's good to go. She's kind of golden on money. She has stacked up some cash, so she just goes back. But I feel like in that way, therefore, it wasn't about money to her. It was about kind of embarrassment and I think kind of maybe wanting to figure her thing out as far as like what was she going to be doing with her time for herself, for her life, for her livelihood. So she returned to her roots and she gets this play written for her by a playwright friend that she has and then she performs it. And they said that she foregoed a salary for it because she was going to just collect on the profits. Well, it turned out to be really successful. This was so cool to see who starred with her. So the C.K. Dexter Haven Carrie Grant role, Joseph Cotton was playing that in the play. And Van Heflin was the Mike Connor, the Jimmy Stewart role. And then Shirley Booth was the Liz Embry role. So the thing plays for like 400 performances. I feel like they were saying that that was on Broadway or if it wasn't Broadway, it was an established playhouse or whatever. And then it went on tour, it was probably Broadway. And did the tour for like a year, I feel like it said. And then it made like over a million dollars. But once again, part of her profits, you know, she didn't take a salary up front, but it made a million that she was getting that money that way too. So then she's messing around with Howard Hughes. You know, it's like at this point, who didn't mess with Howard Hughes? And especially like in this time frame, but she was messing with him and he bought, and he's a billionaire though. So I don't necessarily think that the fact that he buys this for her has so much significance. I don't think it was a hardship for him to buy it for her, but he buys her the rights to the play to be adapted into a film and gave it to her. And she accepted it because that was kind of just the arrangement that they had going on. And she sold the rights, they said, to Louis B. Mayer at MGM for only $250,000. I don't think that that was expensive for MGM to get the ability to make this movie. And it was probably based on her Hollywood bankability, you know? And think about that, though. Here she is coming from the success of it on Broadway, but to bring her ass back to Hollywood to try and do something with it, they said only $250,000, so I think she kind of had to really do a bargain to get them to be the studio to pick it up. It'd probably be interesting if she had to shop that thing around and maybe MGM was the only one that was going to give her some play. She insisted upon being able to have veto power over all of these major credits that we pay attention to now via My Movie Diary, a product on the market from 1939. The avid moviegoer buys their movie diary. You go watch your film, what's your critique? Hollywood producers are the ones that are gonna wanna know. Are they hitting the mark with you as the viewing public? But like I said, I offer that product, it's a digital download, and I've added these prompts at the top to pay attention to those key production credits that they show, thank goodness, at the beginning of these old movies. 
but it's important to pay attention to, you know, become a connoisseur of these things. Be able to speak to composers, the screenplay writers. I think, like, that's pretty cool to pay attention to. The producers, directors, studios. Um, I'm always paying attention to who does the costumes, but also any Oscars. This thing was nominated, I think it said for six, and it went to, one of them is the best screenplay, adapted screenplay. She knew the dude that did it, wrote it from the play into the film. I feel like he was friends with the playwright that did the play. Um, but he was a well-known, they said he was like a really good adapter of plays to film, so that's why she chose him. So she comes in, she wants to have Clark Gable and Spencer Tracy as the two co-stars, and both of them had contractual obligations doing other pictures at the time not available, but they said, so who directs it is Cucor. This is why I always get so confused about Gone with the Wind. And I'm always like, didn't Clarence Brown have something to do with directing Gone with the Wind? No. But the story with Gone with the Wind from 1939, just the year before this gets released, it's all connected here, uh, Cucor started out directing Gone with the Wind. Alright? Then, he's having problems with Clark Gable on the set, and I guess Clark Gable is enough of a star at MGM that he can get a director fired. So the beef that him and Cukor are having, what ends up happening is Cukor gets released from the film and his friend, Victor Fleming, comes in to finish it. But see, that's the thing about Gone with the Wind. I think that quite a bit of the filming, or a good portion of it, had been done under Cukor's direction. And I think that that footage is included in the film. I'm pretty sure that when Fleming came in, he didn't start from scratch. So there's just, that's the kind of drama about who directed Gone with the Wind. But so they were saying, as long as she was getting cue card, and she probably wanted him for this, that that would have been a no-go for Gable anyway, because they didn't get along. So he wouldn't even wanted to do this movie. Um, I feel like they said that Q Core is the director of Mr. Smith Goes to Washington, so thus in comes Jimmy Stewart. And then Cary Grant, you know, I feel like just wasn't thought of, really. <laughs> and so he's like, he'll do it, right? I feel like that's just kind of, and he was a free agent, right? So he's just, you know, in charge of his own availability, not the way Tracy and Gable are obligated to other things. Um, and he wanted 137000 in fees, and... So it's like, okay, of course that's Carrie, right? And top billing, and of course that's Carrie. But he took all that money and he donated it to the war efforts. So that's Carrie, Deborah Carr. That's what I'm saying. If you guys watch the Watch Along of Sundowners, you know Deborah Carr is like this for me because she spoke slick about Carrie and it's just, come on now, I don't like that. So um, you can see by this wall, I don't like that to talk against Carrie Grant. So the fact that this is another one of Cary Grant and Katherine Hepburn pairing up together as she's bringing herself back to Hollywood. That is so interesting to me how he manages to not be on that list because if bringing a baby is kind of the straw that breaks the camel's back of the public being able to accept her, kind of doing some bizarre roles. Sylvia Scarlet did not help her out. And bringing a baby is kind of a weird movie, right? It's weird. <laughs> it's just all over the place. And so like I said, if that's the thing that is the straw that breaks her back, Carrie's in Sylvia Scarlet with her. Carrie is right next to her in Bringing Up Baby. Carrie's in the last thing that she does, Holiday, before she leaves, and he gets to be with her. Isn't it just interesting the way he got through that unscathed? And he's becoming bigger and bigger a star each performance that by the time, here he is in 1940, number one, he is too drop-dead gorgeous in this movie. Oh my gosh, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to breathe. And, you know, by he is at cruising altitude. I mean, and he's just gonna do bigger and bigger things from here, but as far as his money is concerned, um, he's got a handle on that as well. But just enjoying a different type of experience than almost everybody else going on in Hollywood at this time too because he's a free agent. So, yeah, major crucial classic. Glad to be able to watch it. It's time. Um, the Jimmy Stewartness of it, I, um, whatever, you know what I mean? Oh, let's talk about that though too because yes, he wins the other Oscar. I feel like they said it was nominated for either five or six. Um, he wins the best... Oh, he won the Best Actor Oscar? Because he's not the lead actor, screen time-wise, in this movie, but is that the one that he won? Now I gotta find that out. If he won Best Actor for this thing, but anyway, he said that he felt, and this is always what Hollywood is doing, especially back in this day, he felt that he was getting this as a consolation prize for not having won in 1939 for Mr. Smith Goes to Washington, and who won that? Robert Donat for Mr. Chips. That's interesting. Mr. Chips and Mr. Smith Goes to Washington, and Mr. Chips won. So, but he definitely felt like, and that, that is the answer, Jimmy Stewart. Because that's what I'm saying, like, I'm gonna need to Google, did he win the Best Actor Oscar for this movie? Because I would say he needs to win Best Supporting Actor. 
Um, but if he won the Best Actor Oscar for this movie, it is his consolation prize for not getting it for Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. Okay. So, um, I'm going to feel a little bit of Oscar. I know that right now if he won the Best Actor Oscar. <laughs> but whatever, you know, I just really do not like him either. You guys already know that. Like, he's just over the F hyped. So, uh, whatever. It's, you know what it is with him too? It's, of course, the whole ladies man forced on us aspect of things. But we just saw Wife vs. Secretary, and he's like the, aside from Gable, Myrtle Loy, and Jean Harlow, the other like most screen time actor in there. And he's always doing these unnecessary things with his mouth as he speaks. Just little gestures, real hard gestures with his mouth, and it's team too much. So, um, yeah, let me look that up. <laughs> we will get started watching this one together. Uh, best ways that I recommend to do these watch alongs is try and have everything on one screen, but if you cannot do that, you do watching the movie on your phone and the watch along with me on your TV. That'd be the only way that I suggest that you have to make use of your phone for watching the film is because you cannot access all the clickable links. Um, to launch the movie if you are tied to this video of me available on your YouTube app on your TV. That's when you can make use of all the clickable links on your phone. Push play on the movie. One screen is if you can do everything on one device, such as your laptop or your tablet, desktop, whatever. Two tabs, this video of me on one tab, the video of the movie on another, they'll lock side by side, pull the movie to take more of the screen. Then take your HDMI cable from that device and plug it into your TV. Now you've got it all set up on one big screen. You're only doing that if you don't have connectivity and all of that stuff. If you've got connectivity, you can do everything wirelessly. It's called casting. So you start out by casting your device to your TV. It's just mirroring. So whatever you're doing on your laptop, computer, or tablet is showing up on your big screen TV. Then you would launch the movie, push play on it, get any lag out of the way, rewind it back to zero. This video of me on YouTube, play on TV, picture in picture, shrinks me, floats me, you move me into a small corner of the movie. And that's always the goal, intended way, that you guys are having the best enjoyable watch along experience because we want you watching the movie on the fullest, biggest part of your screen, whatever you're making use of. And then I am just off in the corner talking crap. There will be a runtime timer in the corner of this video of me, hour, minute, and second, telling you where the playback of the movie has to be to be in perfect sync, that what I'm saying is perfectly in sync with what's happening in the movie. But that's what we do. Um, yeah, so check out our products that are available over on Etsy, those photo packs. Um, and like I said, guys, th those photo packs are like a seriously, truly from the heart. I did a lot of hard work looking for the highest resolution photos that I could find on the internet. Um, there's photos that are in classification of being able to be used commercially, but a lot of those are not high resolution photos. So I was really scouring for like the best final result printout for you guys. If you want to print them out, there would all be an eight and a half by 11 this size. Um, get some nice glossy paper. I've got that linked for you down in the description. Or you put them in one of those cool digital photo frames. I found one of those linked in the description as well. Just let it cycle through. But yeah, that was a lot of fun. And you guys can tell, I, I tell you, that full-size poster that I am able to have of these two, prized possession. And so back in the day, being able to have your actual hard copy um, pictures, you had to go get it someplace. So not so much in this day and age, and it's still a ton of fun. All right, let me get everything set up, and we will push play. Okay, yes, he did win the Best Actor Oscar. It was his consolation prize for Mr. Smith. Um, and here's one cool little tidbit about this on my finger. So this is the Grace Kelly knockoff of her engagement ring, the story behind this. There is a remake of this movie, High Society, but in that movie, she's just been engaged to Prince Rainier, and he came here. Did he come here with her engagement ring? He gave her some type of a, I believe it was a ruby, and maybe more of a band. And here you go. And after he gave her the ring, there was somebody in her circle that pulled him aside and said, um... <laughs> so he makes an emergency trip. I feel like he went to uh, New York because she was not, they weren't in New York. They were at her family home. Was she more from Philadelphia or whatever? Maybe Philadelphia. He makes an emergency trip out to, was it Tiffany? I think it was Tiffany's. And that like shuts down the store because he's coming and they need to give him a proper diamond because he's a prince of a country um, to give to her as an engagement ring. And it wasn't even something that they had as a ring. It was some like the biggest diamond that they had in their store um, on something else. And he was like, what's the matter with that one? They were like, oh, okay. So they had to then place it in the ring for her. And I feel like... It wasn't that, I feel like maybe he sat there and waited, like they did, they shut down the store for him. I feel like he did leave the store with 
now this proper ring. So he came back, you know, and now he gives her this. And he was like, okay, you know, like he felt embarrassed. So he was trying to take back the, um, people, this, I got this off of the QVC because <laughs> they have this dude. You, you guys, I know you guys, you're not going to shame me. I know you have seen that dude, right? Because he does the Jackie O jewelry and then he did, he moved over into doing Grace Kelly. But he has all of these stories behind these pieces. And so I feel like he was offering her, I feel like it is a ruby, people, and just like a band. Engagement ring. So anyway, this, he comes, he gives her this, and he's trying to like embarrassedly take back the other one. And she's like, no, I have two engagement rings. Because she wasn't given back the first one that he proposed to her with. And I think like good on Grace Kelly because she didn't have her nose turned up in the air um, at receiving the first thing that he gave her. But this was more like it. Okay, so now she's making that movie. And she needs, I feel like for whatever reason, they need to have some footage of her engagement ring. And... For whatever reason, like, I don't know, that had been a, the detail that had been overlooked or whatever, but she was like, oh, don't worry. She was like, I have one. That'll work. So this ring of hers is shown in the movie, but that is her literal, real, just received engagement ring. That's the story. We're wearing it right now. Okay, runtime hour is at 52 and 13 seconds. You, I cannot see it across my room. Playing in three, two, one. They have different footage of Louis, huh? This music, I forgot about the music. So they were actually saying like, this is the best of the marriage, divorce, remarriage movies. Um, and that the reason why they make this type of a movie is that, oh, cause people have to get a divorce so that they can mess around with other people and get back together because we know that um, infidelity, adultery, or whatever is not allowed per the code. What other movies do we have in this genre? I'm sure there are plenty of them. Gowns are by Adrian, okay? And hairstyles, Sydney, is it Guilaroff? Guila? I just didn't see. Is it Franz Waxman? Was that who it was for the score? Ruth Hussey. I've seen her in one other movie with Ginger Rogers. Is it Tender Comrade? I know, yes, that is it. But I'm trying to think if there's anything else I've seen her in. Okay. It's almost this exact same music for Woman of the Year. Oh my gosh, we are about to see Carrie. Let me get ready. The Corona? <laughs> okay. Uh <laughs> but it was Dinah did he really suck her okay this dude right he's from Lost Horizon they didn't say who played his role I wonder if he played it on Broadway because other than Lost Horizon I haven't seen him in anything I don't think this music Watched this. You guys heard me tell you right before um, It's a Wonderful Life. I just watched this movie. If it should rain, try some on it. for it. I just changed my picture quality. I wanted it a little brighter. It just stinks. 
smells, but only if absolutely necessary. You know what? By now, she's in a lot of the little movies with Shirley Temple as an evil woman. <laughs> Dinah is always getting the tea. Um, that's weird. Uh, okay, so they're giving Tracy a lot of influence. Um, so she's the reason that her mother is divorced. Her mother just wanted a cheating husband. This is pretty pathetic, right? Like, her mother divorced her dad because Tracy said so and she wants to still be married to her dad. Knowing why she divorced her husband. It would not We're full of Inando. Inando. Innuendo. Own oh, father. Oh, you know who she is to this little girl, Dinah. Hard. Mademoiselle, mademoiselle. What's that? All this in heaven, too? Okay, but you wouldn't say that to Tracy, huh? Nothing in the possible least ever happens here. Dinah. Go. Go. It's an interesting, you know what this really is, is just rich people, um, and they need to be a little distasteful to us, right? Like, we're superior to them. Uh, that's what Hollywood often does with these over-the-top, because this part right here is a very bizarre, why are they kicking it with their uncle? And why on earth would he do what he's about to do to his niece? Rich people, really weird family dynamic problems. And this dude, uh, he's been making movies. Is it since Silent? I've never seen him anything silent, but... He's in Cary Grant's first movie. though it's like they don't they're not a good match he's superficial he's on the come up there he is am I in the paper And me becoming How long have these two known each other? How did they meet? Prod hags. She is overcompensating for... Okay, no you did not. 
You don't even know what that means. You weren't doing it like that with Dexter either. Um, Tracy, who is running everybody's life, it seems. But she's like, it is, he has the line. It's like, he's way too far of a swing from me. <laughs> and how stuck up they are. He doesn't know how to ride. Little Dinah. Huh? <clears throat> what does that do? So he's not, you know, ever going to be accepted in because from jump, he wasn't able to get right up on that horse, right? Like the uncle's already done. Just that. Oh, that's Carrie. That's all I see. <laughs> I gather that these two become really uh, Jimmy Stewart and Cary Grant good friends on this film you don't like me oh hate oh to hate anybody. He's got it a bit toned down in this movie. I believe. Now look here. Close bank account. Dog on it. See the way he just said dog on it, like he was, it was in the moment, right? That was appropriate for the moment. But there's other things where he would just talk like that for not that riled up of a reason. Carrie's just getting, you know, scrutinized. But then he looks right at the fault. You might also say. Carrie's almost as tall as Jimmy sort of. Except for on occasion for
spit in your eye. Chose. Uh, you know what? That's what I was going to look up. What the F does spit in your eye mean? We got an Urban Dictionary that back to 1940. <laughs> because nobody says that anymore. Like, what is that supposed to mean? But he got it. It was a read. She just read him. Maybe this is. Look at Carrie. Has he already started to get real familiar with just the cut and the placement of where he wants every button, every seam? That's what it is about him. I wouldn't give him vain. He just... He's a Capricorn. He's an Earth sign. They're very... Earth sign people are very... Um, over the top about things, right? And so that's what it is for him with his clothes. You know what I mean? Like, that's just a representation of himself. I'm just... I'm going to stand up for him on that. He's hyper aware of it. But I don't equate it to vanity, as Deborah Carr said. Um, okay. What does spit in your eye mean? What does spit in your eye mean? According to Collins Dictionary, spit in someone's eye. To deliberately upset or annoy someone. Oh. To deliberately upset or annoy someone. To live in a dump like this. Don't worry, they won't. What's all that stuff up at the top? I've never noticed that. This is funny. They look like they got a hawk shop on the side. hot mess, huh? All of these gifts for this thing that's... We already saw the shape of it, right? Between her and do whatever his name is. Okay. Yeah, what kind of a... <laughs> so instead of Macaulay, they call him Mike. Okay, Mike. Listen to her sometimes. He fell for it. He's on the come up. What that happened in the house? So they are just steadily going through all of these stupid wedding gifts. My gosh. He's such a jerk, huh? Just wait for somebody to come and talk to your ass. Like, and they need to be figuring out what their story is. Or does Dexter have to do that for them, too? Here comes my poster. Oh, well, so this is the first time she's seen him in two years. <laughs>
So yeah, no hello or anything. Else. I assure you I wouldn't. She has, what's the word, animosity towards him. There they are. Actually, maybe that might not have been. of intuition. <laughs> Who else should it be but Cary Grant, right? photos to him. <clears throat> Shh, Donna. Wait, then it's true. He needs a story. Am I red? So she's giving him no credit for any type of reform. They haven't seen each other for two years. He isn't standing in here right now like he's all wasted or... I bet it's on the kind of that. Oh, I listen around. Check her out. Not always there. Which incidentally doesn't deserve it. <laughs> He's a jerk, huh, Mike? I don't know how good that is. Oh, Dexter, how perfectly. I knew she said dreadful. She's a little Quaker, huh? That's the Quaker spirit.
<laughs> Haven. Roughly, my grandfather built it. Oh, I, I love the way Carrie handles him. He's such a jerk. Huh? She's terrified. Yeah, fool. I think you have some home training. Rapacious. Just ask me. He's just gonna put his, yeah, I mean, this dude, he just has no home training, so he still didn't take his hat off. <laughs> there he goes. Friends of my brother Julius, are you not? of Morgan. Again. I knew she did that with her, but listen. Okay. <laughs> She's got that fork necklace on. <laughs> Lydia. See, this song was reminding me of what that lady is singing in The Locket with Robert Mitchum and Lorraine Day. <laughs> Red, white, and blue. She did change her. Welcome here. Papa. Yeah, so they do expect rooms, huh? Well, they already have them. Oh, you can be. I hope you take loads. Can you imagine? A grown man. What is, you can see the big rock on her finger. You know, their family bought that ring for her. Of whom you have many, I'm sure. South Bend. It sounds like dancing, doesn't it? <laughs> I'm so sorry.
See, look, right away, she picks up on that. He's never paid attention to the cues. Where the darned squirrel lives. I think I'm sweet. Occasionally we get the breezes. What is that supposed to mean? <laughs> One book isn't much for men of 30. Going together. <laughs> Why are they all offended by that? Say, who's doing the interviewing here? Going to leave me? Good in, my dear. She wears her hair, Tracy. Isn't it pretty? <laughs> now, did the mom, was the mom offering her a read or was she sincere about that? Business sense. <laughs> Where does he stay? I'm the property. Has he ever met Junius? It's sickening. It's like every interaction she has with him, she's acting. Dear Papa. Oh, jeez, Uncle Willie. Enemies. Oh yeah, so the mom knows him. Dad.
gets the left to the jaw. And what have you? Did it break the camera though? Oh, yeah. Does she have another one? Your father. <laughs> Carrie. <laughs> Uncle Willie. Okay, so, and then this dude is pretty much a POS too because he cheated on his wife. They're in this fix because of him. But Tracy's a corona, right? He's gonna take his hat off. I mean, and he's such a jerk. He's very arrogant, huh? Like, that's the trait to know that Mike goes through life with. Because the way he's going to interact with these poor little librarian ladies, they're in Quaker country, right? This smells so good. I'm about to just be in heaven. Have a washroom. Paul, so you're not gonna go consult with her colleague. <laughs> why does Tracy like changes every five minutes, and why does she have to have this cap on her head? Because she came to the library to read a book. <laughs> Why does she need to look like that? Does she say it off right away? Don't kid yourself, they are. Yeah, because you're such a jerk in person. Okay, it's armor. Tracy is a hot mess, right? Because she's getting married tomorrow to some dude that, does she know his middle name? She interacts with him always like she is in a role. And now she is definitely trying to get to know Mr. Connor too. As far as he goes, she's used to Mike letting her see him with someone else. Wow. 
I should take that cap off. She has no perception. What? Oh. The notes I was looking up, they made it a point to say that she's going to do her own dive. We know that. She's very athletic. She does all of those golf swings in, is it Pat and Mike? That's the movie. She was pretty much a professional golfer. What? Okay. Okay. No, she said offer. Doesn't she mean for like rent? She trying to just let him be there rent free. Patronizing. Oh. What does he have? It's not just a coincidence that he's here. Here for right now. They don't know how to be civilized to one another. Okay, all right, all right, all right. Good. Dexter, what did you come over here for? He came to read her for Phil. Interested. Why they have so much animosity between each other? So she knew about it. Yeah, he does not need to be here for this. Oh, for, you don't have the words all of a sudden. Okay. Yeah, he needs to leave.
did it happen? Yeah, I mean, y'all don't need to be trying to speak to people about this. Inverginal. Foul words. That's a foul word uh, in this day and age. I don't know I fancy myself as anything. Oh, okay. That's, okay, why is here? Is this where he tells her he's too much of a swing? Okay. This movie, I can see, is slightly off sync. Yeah, because he's not, he's on the come up. <clears throat> Dexter. Okay, he's not done. I love it in these movies when women just pin their hair up without looking. Well, he's been like that this whole time so far. Either can't or make no attempt to. What if she can't carry down? Okay, well, he's brought it to her attention. <clears throat> okay. They haven't talked to each other for two years. Yeah, I mean, he's had his say damn good. Yeah, we'll ask you for it. <laughs> oh, he brought her. She ain't trying to look at that. So for whatever reason, this right here is like important that she does it herself. And we know she is. They're supposedly, is it probably in Sylvia Scarlet with her and Carrie, where they, one of the two, Carrie was supposed to run out into the cold ocean and go save somebody, and he wouldn't do it, I guess, because it was too cold, so she ends up doing it. Your friend. No, I think her friend, Paul. Doesn't he get that? Not for anything lingering. The thing that I marvel at is how she's about to get out of this water. Does he, is he standing right there with the towel for her? Cold water. He wrapped her up right away. See, how long have these two known each other? A lot of things that you'll never understand about me. George? Right? Oh. 
Our, I thought he would say our marriage. Friend. Yeah. Is that why she's about to ask him this? Right. He doesn't want to be. He doesn't want to be. Because you'll never get to really know me, George. You know, you don't. It's you that doesn't see what I mean. Well, who didn't see what she means at first? Is she talking about Mike? About the house? Because Dexter didn't... She wasn't trying to explain anything to Dexter. Contrary to how he was rating her for filth. I mean, did she... Was she trying to correct, explain herself correct, Dexter's perception of her? It's cool the way the lighting has changed some. Huh? There's going to be a scene of the two of them that I wish I could have as a poster. I've thought, it's like I gotta pause the movie, take a picture, <laughs> and see if I can get it blown up. Oh, uh oh, they're busted. Huh? Say, you idiot. The mom's dress is pretty. Huh? This is amusing. She's about to say a couple of words that I had to look up. Oh, titular. Here she goes. Dancer friend. Very dulcet. Yeah, I actually had to look up, I guess, um, titular. <laughs> I couldn't understand what he was saying. As you guys are watching this, it might be just a split second that they're going to move. <laughs> oh, dude, go do something with yourself about that. Okay, so then he won't go cheat. character that warrants that from her I already said that this dude is a POS huh? 
Oh, because he didn't cheat on his wife, right? And he didn't. And her mom says it's nobody's business anyway but his. Right. Read him. had scenes like this in film before there are words that everybody can speak to each other where are okay well full you know what there are words that everybody can speak to each other that are we ending you know the relationship you ain't gonna just be talking to me any and every kind of way uncle willie because this is what I'm talking about. This is, there's going to be nothing that gets resolved between her and her dad from how he just read her for film. And then it's me that does. He'll just be walking her down the aisle and she'll try and apologize to her dad and he'll say, I never said that daughter and I never will. It's be like, well, well, you said everything else. That is not about love, not about unconditional parental love. And you are a piece of immoral crap yourself, you know? And he just told her it was her fault. That he got caught up in whatever he didn't do with Tina Mora. You will. Does he already pinch her? Uncle Willie is so creepy. I... <laughs> Die to an eye. I think it is just slightly out of sync. Oh, don't you think you weren't? I'm serious, people. Are okay, and especially when it comes to these parental situations. When everybody gets to be an adult, right? So now your parents an adult, but she's a full grown ass adult. Talking to her like that, I mean. The relationship has to remain intact anyway. Those are unhealthy, passed down through generations, mindsets to think that. Like, oh, so I just have to have this type of really toxic, abusive interaction going on with my parent. I'm So obviously that's what we get about Tracy. She has a lot of, what is it? There's stuff about herself that she doesn't like, right? I think, like, Dexter just really forcefully dug at it. And that, I think, what, it's... She realizes that she comes across as too mean to people, right? Too hard, too all of these little simple words that people are using with her. And somehow I think that does get to her because I think that she can kind of identify ways that she doesn't relate enough to people, right? Thus how she is fake as F with this dude right here. She's not trying to relate to him. She's just going to marry him. She don't know nothing about this fool. It's, I think like the impression of how much they don't know about each other, it begs the question, how long have they known each other? See they're not on the same page so they don't know how to do parties oh she, she's gonna stay all night he wants to go to bed he doesn't even really want to be at this party they don't and they're finding that out about each other the night before they're supposed to be getting married um 
so yeah, I think that Tracy, and it, I think she's critical of people outside of herself when it's really stuff that she doesn't like that she sees in the mirror, right? It's usually. But a parent like her dad that is taking no accountability for his, again, we start out this movie because of the BS that he's gotten the family caught up into. She's trying to prevent the family's name from getting sullied, spoiled, made more fun of for her poor mother. And here he shows up on the scene, all chip on his shoulder and, oh, it's your fault. You know, you're too harsh. Um, he probably doesn't even know Kittredge. And you don't. Okay, well. <laughs> See, that, she didn't like that. It's interesting, too, when, when she gets a read from C.K. Dexter Haven, it registers. So, it leads you to believe, what broke them up? And the animosity between the two of them is showing very unresolved issues between the two of them. That truly, she really does hold Dexter's opinion in high regard. Here she's a wasted mess, right? Oh, really? Yeah, there's no moss, right? Because it ain't going to be lasting. But I'm saying, like, her dad is doing no work as a father. She's not a good enough daughter. She's not doting over him. He's got low moral character. Has stepped out as much as he did on his marriage that he's divorced from his wife. It's a known thing in society, right? That she's doing, she's taking the L to try and protect the family from, like I said, having to have it smeared on the front page. But it's all her, it's all Tracy, right? What did the dad do? We've been seeing too many things with the, it's like the Sundowners too. It's like, I'm gonna need to see some parents stepping up with the ability to be demonstrating some effing unconditional love towards their kids. And so that being the case, it's like, I, that's, parents learn that lesson. Like when you get to this position with your adult kids, they're not still kids. They're adults. There has to be an adjustment in the interaction abilities. And you can't just be abusing the F out of adults expecting, like you just have some position That can't be compromised. Okay, what about Mike? Down? He's nosy, huh? He's just, he's getting sloppy now. He wants some tea. Yeah, he wants to come and get this tea. <laughs> so Carrie is staying sober. <laughs> they are almost the same height. Okay, here he goes with his messiness at nosy. <laughs> they said that was unscripted right there. It was never, they left it in. Okay, what, Mike? Damn. <laughs> My book? Suspected depth. <laughs> okay, Mike. Oh, okay, there he is.
Oh, he doesn't know about her. He's the only one that does. Um, Cause no, it was. He's like, I don't despise you. It's something inside of yourself that you can't help, or you make. No well, and that's where it's like, well, damn, Carrie, if she can't help it, um, yeah, I mean, it was. He went hard. He went in. You can't talk to her like that. A goddess. So what is it instead of queen? Look at Carrie's hands. <laughs> Does he get one of these guns right now? He does that because Carrie's got to like move it away Oh, okay. Boston. <laughs> Here comes the picture I want. Gatehouse. This is actually a very telling scene, right? I mean, because back in this day, they're not supposed to sleep in the same bed, but here they are. This is my picture. See, oh my gosh, this movie is actually quite a bit deeper than the comedy aspect of it. I mean, it's between these two so much. Yeah, she hasn't forgotten how you wrote her for filth, Dexter. You really hurt her. It's interesting. 
interesting because it's like it's making you process Tracy's side of their breakup, right? Like, does she really have anything to read him about his character down to his soul you know how worth nothing he is <laughs> the way that he told her he drank too much that was what she had to say um she did not lay into his character the way he did her and i don't think that she has that to say you know about him so their ending isn't like a deal breaker for her to where, you know, he gives her complete and total Osco the way her dad does, right? What did we just see in the background move behind his head? Did you guys see that? Like way in the back there? Couldn't be anybody of George. I like her hair. And I love this dress, Adrian. Huh? I like how long it is. Okay, um, why? Tracy O'Hara and Dexter. See, she's a mess. She's not um, figuring it out how to fix it right, correctly. Whatever it is that needs fixing with her. She's getting married to do tomorrow, right? Remember? <laughs> Why? Yeah, okay. Why are you even trying to get to know him well enough to read him like that? We. And she's so drunk like this because too many people jumped on her today, huh? Okay. <clears throat> okay, there's something she sees in that dude. His humble beginnings. What is there about that? Okay, he is a jerk, huh? And he is. He thinks he's superior to everybody. Intellectual snob. Okay, Tracy. He is. You ought to get around. So everything she's saying, she feels for herself. <clears throat> Until for human frailty. So that's, you know, these, like I told you, these spiritual people. The things that bother you the most in other people is exactly what you need to work on the most in yourself. She was reading him for that. And it is true. She can pick up on this on it. He's easy to read, right? But she couldn't quite finish that for herself. Whose frailty? So, okay. It's the frailty in her father that she can't he, her dad got into her head. Okay, now what? <laughs> oh, he's very arrogant. Yeah. 
Yeah, everybody hurt her feelings really hard today. Like, she, um, it's not able to take that compliment or whatever. Tracy, why does it not matter ever who the man is? Is she a hoe? At heart? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, what? Why can this dude, why is he getting through to her? That, she needs to, what she's getting from him, she needs to provide to herself. Okay, so for five minutes as you've been wasted, or five hours as you've been wasted today, You've been coming across a little bit differently, and this fool sees you like that. Um, this music. Okay, Tracy! See it in yourself. Okay, I'm gonna... Adjust it in yourself, Carrie. You either can't help it or you won't. And now that she's been made aware of it, she can if she wants to. She's going to have to. Focus on doing it, right? Like, it's not going to just be automatic. But that's what she needs to do, not get her fill from this full writer. So, I'm not, ooh, that fool wouldn't be touching me if I knew that it's not love. Oh, we ain't going swimming, fool. Put me in your pot. Mm -mm. <laughs> that right there makes me want to throw up. That I don't, I can't do that. I can't be having that compromise, that lack of congruity. She is kind of a hoe. Tracy's kind of a hoe. That's interesting because she's virginal, she's chaste, she's pure. She, no, she ain't. Why, why does it not matter who the man is? Why is it able to be Mike Connor, who she's known for a day and a half? Is, or is it a day? They got here this morning? That is... In, she is... Um... Uh -huh. What's going to happen as they go for this swim, okay? Like, in all honesty, what is going to be the context of what takes place with them? Even with what doesn't, right? Oh, okay, and then look, here are the two people affected by whatever does or does not happen between those two. Photograph well. Because he's going to ask. Okay. Did you? He's messed up. Huh? Was he too harsh on her? Was he too harsh on Tracy? Yeah. Because he's a little bit of a man home. <clears throat> and that somebody else the next day that she absolutely should is this, Liz is okay cause you know what she really just said unless this bitch is going to be marrying somebody else the next day that she also is not supposed to be marrying oh he didn't get an answer when I called her home cause where is she supposed to be the party's over. Oh, yeah, it's not cold. This dude is 
coming out of the house. Oh, Carrie, why do you say that? Well, why did he just say that? And he's kind of the only one in the position to understand. He's, you saw him standing at the stairs talking to Liz, he, how down he looked. He realized he's been a little bit too harsh to her, right? Like he effed her up. He hurt her hard, huh? And he feels responsibility and ownership for that. So he is understanding that he wouldn't judge her for it. He wishes she was more of a hoe sometimes. <laughs> like, she's too chaste, virginal, pure. A goddess that he has to worship from afar. Let's watch Carrie. Look at him. He's like all proud of her. Look at Carrie. <laughs> so... What the F happened between those two? No matter what their little effed up explanation is going to be about it. Look at how disrobed they both are. But. He's all proud of her, but she's all wasted. Look at, look at Carrie's face. I, this, I have never reacted to this movie properly in all of these years. This story is a little bit deeper emotionally. It's like an emotional study of these people. And it is definitely a connection between those two. He loves it. <laughs> She'll draw a blank. But is it promising, Carrie? Can she make some progress? Carrie, you started it. This dude don't know her like that. Carrie, you were too hard on her. Oh, you treated her like she was human? Carrie's being hypocritical right there because he went in way too hard on her. Okay. Now, this is this movie, the psychology of it. He got... Carrie enjoyed that just now. No, he's not. <laughs> right? <laughs> okay, so Carrie's proud of her, but he just also knocked on full down. <laughs> pretty freaking clever like if you really it's like you gotta see it about 500 times to get their intention of all of these underlying themes so okay her dad she took ownership of what her dad was putting on her that's the, the human frailty because it's like who's got the human frailty of course it's dexter and the drinking but it, that was the extent of it like i said she didn't have a whole bunch of reading for his soul and all of this shit that he's a piece of crap about in his soul if that was the case she wouldn't have gave a half of an f about the read that he gave to her in bed um and that translated, it opened her up. Now she was a little bit receptive to, then her dad's going to lay all that crap on her. Uh, so, 
I personally, you ain't gonna talk to me like that, okay? You aren't just always gonna be reading me for filth. There is every part of the same type of a moral character read that I can give back to you. Everybody gotta take a little bit of accountability, okay? I don't dote on you enough as a father, but you're a piece of crap morally that gives me Osco is the reason why I don't. How about let's have that conversation? <laughs> but you ain't just gonna walk away telling me I'm a perennial spinster in a prig and you're in the clear. And see, that's what, like, they don't interact with one another again before we're going to see him walking her down the aisle and they're gonna have some type of resolution. It'll be because she's taking her own accountability. Her dad has work to do on himself, though. Mr. Connor. I mean, yeah, where did he just come from? <laughs> he looks right up to her room, huh? <laughs> so it's been like four hours. How gross her body feels. Fine day, though. <laughs> Oh, he can't, he needed to expect, inspect his handiwork. He wants to make sure, is she going to draw a blank or what's up? With this pipe right in her face. Does he put it in her face? He puts it back in his mouth to be in her face with it. <laughs> They get married in 20 minutes. So she almost slept through her wedding. Well, did she sleep at all? Does she not have her engagement ring? Oh, she didn't have her engagement ring on? Oh, now she does. <laughs> sort of. <laughs> Carries the cover on it. <laughs> and it was no dream. to go live. It's not white no. A skunk? Was it her? He was still coming. Her dream. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. 
She's superior to herself right there, huh? So she, yeah, that little way she just conducted herself. <clears throat> Does she remember Dexter's read for filth? Too. Something you either can't fix or won't. how you do talk to her a bit under control though I so you, you didn't say that little phrase everything else is not okay though oh yeah cover on the For being a good girl. Oh, really? Being a hoe, huh? Only remember. Okay. Bye, Diana. She's doing a good little job in this movie, huh? Oh, he remembers? Is he going to be trying to tell her right away that she shouldn't be getting married in a few minutes? <laughs> oh. Well, that was a flock of wine. How pretty this looks like. So she doesn't remember just what Dinah told her. And so forth. Yes, no matter what else they didn't do, yes, there was some so forth. <laughs> oh, so you're going through with it. That's how he... Because of so forth. C.K. Dexter Haven. Well, why are you saying that to her if you're wondering if she should be marrying you? You're a hoe. Look at the way he's looking at her. Why did he say that she's wonderful? Because she doesn't have any regrets about whatever the so forth is that happened between them. And, she, and she's just getting married anyway. She's wonderful. Why are her eyes open? How many times have I said, why does it matter? Why does it not matter who the man is that's in front of her? And now her eyes are open. She wasn't aware of how, 
She said to Mike that I know it's not love, but let's just go take this swim after we just kissed each other twice really hard. Oh, I was like, I thought that was Tracy's man. Why does he know how he loves his grandmother? They got to know each other that well. <laughs> Here's the necessary interaction right now, right? What is Carrie wearing right now too? Where do I fit in? She's a mess, huh? But it just goes to show how little she knows George, doesn't remember him, is just getting married to him right now. And he ain't going to give her a divorce. Would he marry her? Is she supposed to be quite 30 yet or did he say no need to that's sweet huh? These two, hey. Oh, so his little gift outweighs everything he had to say to her. Because she got it. She understands it. Okay, all right. Oh, she has some money. Oh, he designs boats. Authenticity between these two, huh? For sure. That is so crazy. That's all he wants. What? 
color. So is it pink? What color is it? Is it white? Yes, it does. It's really pretty. <laughs> oh, okay. I thought she was calling Mike. Her little handkerchief. <laughs> His ideals. And not Dexter's ideals. That's absolutely correct. She's just ready how to let it go. Say goodbye. Okay, bye. <laughs> okay, seriously. <laughs> really, Mike, so when did that kick in? And if we don't, we should. Are they going to show Carrie? Stop. No, but just the right. Okay, and you had it. Yeah, come on. Oh, he needed to. Tracy, seriously, so that's okay. What happened is okay. And 
and so also when full right there in the back here's what it was it's okay okay oh now he's down He's about to lose his opportunity on that complete come up and she would try okay So what does Carrie have in mind? <laughs> My sainted aunt. Oh, he, yeah, check out how seamless this will be, is what he has in mind. Okay. It's, that's what I'm saying. Why does it not matter who the man is, Tracy? Okay, thank you. Okay, lead with these instincts. Because of all of that that she just said is the reason why... <laughs> Me and him wouldn't even have been in this jam. Okay, he feels a way right now. He just read her again. So, she pays attention to Dexter. Um, that's his redhead. Uh, look at him. Carrie's the lead actor in this movie. <laughs> I mean, look at this, look at this. Wearing 
is horrible. <laughs> what in the F is that? Okay. And it's because of that that it's just okay between the two of them. Like a human, like a human being. Okay, Dad, great. Work on yourself. So she does have her whole wedding get up on though. It's like I'm hearing something. Yeah, Dinah. <laughs> Sydney kid. What a creepy kiss that looked like. Close your eyes. See, look at how, it, well, that was how Carrie was going to do this movie, top billing, but Catherine Hepburn didn't really trip about those types of things. Carrie did. Um, that was interesting i've never paid attention to the subtlety there was just a lot of subtle themes and the fact that they end up together at the end i think he's just too gorgeous you know it, it, so it's like i don't really give him enough credit for the depth that and subtleties that were really going on in his portrayal i would say just carrie's involvement in this storyline um, which, you know, was just his character. That's, I guess, Joseph Cotton, they said, played the role on the stage play. But, man, yeah, I mean, they parted ways ugly, right? And had definitely kind of formed these animosities for each other. Understanding what it, I mean, it was like, why did he come to that pool house <laughs> to read her for filth to her soul. I mean, he had all of his list of grievances ready to articulate. The dad missed me. I don't, he was a wasted screen time, but he, Carrie hurt her to her soul telling her about how she does not have the ability to grant people grace for their human frailty. And I in the dad lashing out, he was kind of doing a lot of Tracy. He, instead of taking accountability for, okay, he stepped out on his marriage, he transgressed, he's brought on all of this shame to his family. Like, that's a lot to take ownership for, right? So he clearly took no accountability for it, but... In a way, he's going within and seeing things that he was hurt about that he didn't get from her. I mean, it's like, fine. She had to accept that, right? Like, she had to at least receive that her dad felt hurt by her very strong ability to slay him for, because still justice with your sword, right? So had Carrie not just read her for filth though, like her and her dad wouldn't have been walking down the aisle together. Anyway, it's a great one. It's a thinker, a lot of subtleties. It's very clever. Um, Jimmy Stewart got his little consolation prize, but he got this one. Um, like and subscribe. We will see you guys soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you guys so much for watching this movie with me. I hope you had as much fun as I did. Hey, Hit that thumbs up button for me, especially if you're hearing my voice saying this right now. <laughs> you watched to the end. Um, go ahead and subscribe. Turn on your notifications so you can always be aware of our newest titles to watch together. See you next time.